you're watching Greater Brockton. Today we have a special candidates edition. We have candidates for mayor, city council at large, city council, and school committee. And today I have a new face to bring you on Brockton Community Access on Greater Brockton, Joanne Cody. Welcome, Joanne. Nice to meet you. Thank you for having me today. You're welcome. You're running for mayor, the big spot. I am. I decided to go for the gusto. <laughs> so what brought you into the race? Why did you decide to run for mayor? I'll be honest with you. Um, I can credit a lot of this to... Uh, Win Farrell, actually. Um, I had a neighborhood meeting with Wynn, Dennis Ianieri, and Thomas Monahan, and with my neighbors about a uh, concern of safety in our neighborhood, namely the Myrtle Street incident. Mm -hmm. And um, they were very quick to respond to our concerns, all of our neighbors' concerns. Um, me being new to Brockton, I bought my house last year here, mm -hmm. um, and I have a great neighborhood. I have great pride in my neighborhood where I live and I uh, had a concern of safety so we had a meeting and um, it went very well and I felt that all of the counselors that were there really cared just as much as we did mm -hmm. and they actually kind of prompted me to think about it Think okay, about so you were running. unhappy with how the mayor handled the situation. Very. So you reached out to elected officials. Now Myrtle yes. Street is Myrtle Street in two or three? I forget. Is That's it? three. So it's Dennis Ianieri, who's the yes. current counselor. Tom's mm -hmm. a neighbor. He's, Myrtle is right he's, near Manor. He's Manor. one of my neighbors. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you brought him in. So you yeah. talked to three people that you relate to, representatives, right. and, and I'm on Bouvet. Responded, mm -hmm. right, Bouvet's mm -hmm. right down there. I, I, that's yeah. sort of kind of my old neighborhood. Yeah. I was on Ash Street. I oh, went okay. to the Whitman School. My mom taught there and okay. all of that. So, okay. okay, citizen activism. Okay, when you yeah. decide that you don't like what's going on, you're gonna do something to change it. I'm known for being a woman of action, so. Okay. I, um, I, and I have family that live on Myrtle. Mm -hmm. I have family that live on Johnson. And um, they're educators. Some are in the city, some are out of the city, mm -hmm. and uh, they all felt passionately about the safety, as you know. And they all have families there, and um, that was a bit. That was a big thing. Um, public safety and education are my two main concerns. So right let's now. switch to education. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. mayor is chair of the school committee. Yes. Um, current mayor was on the school committee before mm -hmm. he got elected mayor. Mm -hmm. What educational issues are you concerned about? Um, the, the teacher layoffs or? Absolutely, and the funding. But uh, in, in in all fairness to the mayor, the current mayor, um, I, I don't fault him for the, the funding that's going on right now, or the lack thereof, the mm -hmm. cuts. Um, I've met with the school superintendent, Kathy Smith. Uh, she was kind enough to invite all of us to her meeting last week. Mm -hmm. It was very informative. Um, she put on a great presentation, and it was very transparent. Um, contrary to what you know, other people think or say, you know, uh, getting all the facts in front of you and realizing she's just as frustrated as the rest of the residents here in Brockton mm -hmm. um, are. She's She's addressing the problem as best she can, but she needs our support. She needs all residents' support. She needs parents' support. She needs people to be active. It can't just come down to one person. We, we need to band together and, and really rally against, I, I think, Beacon Hill, myself, to get some education funding because 60 million deficit isn't working. And if we lose education in this city, that's a scary thing to me. So two other big issues that are out there are um the mayor has a proposal to buy the desalinization plant, mm -hmm. the one that we're paying six million dollars a year to rent mm -hmm. and not use any water for. What do you think mm -hmm. of that as a candidate? Do you think it's a good idea or a bad idea? I love the idea of a desalinization plant and how it works. However, I'm not impressed with the plan. I don't think it's cost effective. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not hearing. I'm not being convinced that it's the right thing to do the city right now. If I heard of a better way to fund it, maybe, but I, I'm just not hearing it. I, I'm, I'm concerned we don't have the funding. We, we, just, we just don't. And I think um, we have to prioritize. There's a lot of things that need to be addressed, mm -hmm. but we, uh, as hard as that is, you have to prioritize those items. And I think education and public safety, without those, mm -hmm. 
you don't have. What about the, the MWRA? People have talked about that. That was originally discussed way back when, mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. the desal plant was built. Right. It was kind of ruled out as not being cost effective at the right. time that the MWRA, that mm -hmm. was a four letter word. It right. was a dirty right. word. It was mm -hmm. too much money. Mm -hmm. Neighboring communities are hooked up to it. Stoughton's hooked up mm -hmm. to it. Do you think that's an option? From personal experience, I grew up in Randolph. Okay. I grew up, I'm 48, so <laughs> I have that. Uh, age group where we remember having cesspools and things sure. like that and, and having our parents really scrimp and save to, to have those emptied. And mm -hmm. then once we were able to tie into MWRA, it really was worth it. I mean, it was expensive. Mm -hmm. um, it was one of those bills you didn't want to get, sure. but it was necessary um, in order to support what we needed for the town uh, at that time. Brockton, I, I, it's, you know, right now, I really, I'm, I'm not impressed. I haven't see, seen or read anything that convinces me that desalinization plant is the way to go yet. I wish it was, but I, I'm not seeing it quite yet. Uh, so if, you know, the lesser of the two evils, it may be MWRA may be the way to go. Other towns have done it. They've made it work. I, I don't know for sure. Right now, I'd need more, you know, Info. more information. But... Uh, I, I've seen the pros and cons to it. I've lived it. And, you know, as we know, we, we get bills. Nothing is free. <laughs> no, nothing is so, free. Nothing is free. Yeah, so. What about the um, big issue going on in Ward 3 with West Chestnut Street and a proposed development that's going on over there with, uh, I think it's like 30 houses on the West Bridgewater side, yeah. four of them on the Brockton side, mm -hmm. all coming out to West Chestnut Street. I know Dennis and Erie. The current counselor is very that. opposed to that. Mm -hmm. What have you heard when you're talking to people? You must be going to different wards because you're running citywide, but what have you heard about that? Um, not so much what I've heard, but what I experience in traffic there. Mm -hmm. it, the traffic isn't supported now. I don't know how it would support the traffic with that many more houses in there. I, mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not convinced that that would be the best thing right now. Um, I have actually found ways around that traffic sure, sure. <laughs> because I, I didn't expect the traffic jams on West Chestnut uh, that I've been seeing all summer long and mm -hmm. that's during the summer when people are off. Right. So uh, my concern is how will that change when everybody's going to work and buses, buses and, like and that, I'm, it's at a standstill. So that's concerning to me. Um, I'm, I'm not convinced that would be the best thing and I, I really I'm all for development, but smart develop. Okay. So what's your background? I'm just meeting mm -hmm. you for the first time. Mm -hmm. You know, when I saw your name on the list, I'm like, oh, I don't know who that is. So what's your background with work <laughs> or involvement yeah. in the community? Mm -hmm. Or since you just came here within a year, mm -hmm. past involvement in, in other yeah. communities? Um, honestly, this is my first run in any public office. Mm -hmm. um, my background is um, I was a hairdresser for okay. years. I, I, I mean, I still legally am. I, um, I owned my own uh, salon when I was 22. Started mm -hmm. it with my own money. No loans, no nothing. Did was successful. And then, uh, that was in 92. And over the years, as many small businesses learned in the 90s, things changed with being able to afford health insurance. Sure. 401ks. You're, you know, and you, I was thinking of my future. It's mm -hmm. getting older. So I um, got rid of the business, and I, I still do it on the side, but I joined um, an airline. I work for an airline, okay. and I've worked there for a long time. I hold many certifications. So I deal with a little bit of everything at my airline. I, I work directly with the DOT, the FAA. I work directly with Customs and Border Patrol, uh, the local law enforcement, um, Department of Homeland Security, TSA. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very sen uh, security sensitive job and um, we don't mess around so and I also have to public speak I have to train people um, but as far as politics go no I don't have any background in politics no, I, I, I meant um, background just yeah. general background yeah. because most people mm -hmm. that go into politics they come mm -hmm. from the private sector they yeah. run for office for the first time and they 
bring mm -hmm. the skills that they have to the table. Yep. So yep. business owner is a manager. You yep. manage your own business. You probably manage other employees. Yep. Do you manage employees in the airline too? Are you um, I own? train them. Train. I train okay. them, yeah. yeah. I, um, I, but I have managed. I, have, um, I, I work out of Logan, but I've also, uh, for a few years, I was moving around, uh, opening up other, you know, other locations for our airline in mm -hmm. Providence, in Worcester in the Cape and Islands. Mm -hmm. So I would travel and uh, train our business partners. And um, so I was like an acting manager, you mm -hmm. know, going around. Um, so I'm familiar with managing people. I'm familiar with um, maintaining uh, costs and business expenses, mm -hmm. um, being held accountable. <laughs> um, so that background, um, like I said, although it's not politics, it's uh, definitely people people related, customer service related. Um, so here's my question, yeah. and it can lead it into your close, because mm -hmm. I got the three minute cue, believe sure. it or not. We're oh, close to the wow. 14 minutes, goes fast. <laughs> so why would you be better, and if mm -hmm. you don't like that word, you can change it, mm -hmm. than the current mayor, mm -hmm. and work that into your closing statement, but also let us know how people can get in touch with you, your website, your phone number, if they want to help you out running for office and you can forget I'm here and mm -hmm. talk to the voters. Okay, all right. Um, well, uh, the reason I think I'd like to be given a chance to become mayor of Brockton, I am seeing a lot of complacency uh, in the local issues and the issues that the residents are bringing forth, myself included, things that people feel passionate about, their public safety, their education. Um, I really am very passionate and I'm known to not back down. I'm known to follow through with my plans uh, and not taking no for an answer. And um, I really think that where there's a will, there's a way. I, I'm, I'm keeping told there's a lot of doors being closed, grants are drying up. There's got to be a way to fix some of these major problems here in Brockton. Um, it's, it's imperative and it's crucial. We're at a crucial time right now where, where we cannot lose our uh, funding for education. We need to find a way to get that back and we need to um, focus on public safety and get a sense of community back. And I'm counting on the residents. If I become mayor, I'm planning on asking the residents to be active in this with me because one person can't do it all. I want everybody to be held a part in that and uh, that way we can be successful together. Phone number, website, how to get in touch with you. Okay. Let them know. Um, and again, my name is Joanne Cody. I'm running for mayor of Brockton. My phone number is 508-930-7342. And you can visit me on my Facebook page, uh, Joanne Cody, um, mayor for Brockton. Uh, easy to find. And um, I believe that's it. Right Perfect. Now. Okay. So um, we're hoping... Um, probably after the preliminary, mm -hmm. um, to get everybody together when we get down to the final two, yep. to get two people. Would you be willing to do a debate if sure. you went past the uh, the preliminary? Sure, absolutely. Okay, well, I got you on record. How's yep. that? Not trying to put you on the spot. <laughs> Joanne, nice to meet you. Thanks. Nice you, thank you for coming in. We want to make sure we can educate the voters and let them know about absolutely. all the candidates because uh, we're kind of the only source. Yep. And we want people to know that. Exactly. Um, you're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more events and candidates. I usually say events, places, people, and faces when I do the <laughs> regular show. Um, but most of all, get involved and vote on September 19th. Thank yes. you for joining us.